Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about right triangle trigonometry, sine, cosine, and tangent. So before we get started, um, just a little information on why we need to learn this is always nice. We've learned a few different ways of solving for sides and angles, mostly sides, of right triangles. We've used Pythagorean theorem, and we've used special right triangles, our 30, 60, 90, and our 45, 45, 90 triangle, which you can see in my last couple videos. Um, so what this uh, SOHCAHTOA, or sine, cosine, tangent, does for us is it gives us another way of finding sides and angles of right triangles when the other two uh, ways, the Pythagorean theorem and our special right triangles, when those two don't apply to our problem. So this just gives us another form of solving for these problems when we can't use the other methods. All right, so let's get started. When we talk about trigonometry, sine, cosine, and tangent, we have to have a right triangle, when, when we're doing right triangle trigonometry, which is what our lesson is today. Um, but when we do this, we have to look at right triangles a little differently. So if we have a triangle, ABC, where C is our hypotenuse, uh, instead of just talking about legs and hypotenuse, or sorry, C is the right angle, instead of just talking about legs and the hypotenuse, we need to talk about uh, the different sides pertaining to a specific angle. So if we're looking from angle A, the side across from it is what we're going to call the opposite side. So it's opposite from our angle that we're talking about. C is always across from, or the right angle is always across from the hypotenuse, so that doesn't change. And then the side, the other leg that's left that's next to our angle of reference is called our adjacent side. So kind of familiarize with these, yourself with these terms, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So now if I had the same triangle, but this time our reference angle was angle B, our hypotenuse wouldn't change because the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, but now our adjacent and our opposite sides are switched. If we're talking about angle B and we go opposite from angle B, now this side is going to be my opposite and this side is going to be my adjacent. So it depends on which angle is your reference angle and you always want to pay attention to which one you're supposed to be looking from. All right, so sine, cosine, tangent represents the ratio is made from any two sides of our triangle. And we can either do them by hand if we're given enough information, or sometimes we're going to use our calculators. And you're going to see both of those in this lesson today. All right, so let's look at um, this helpful box here. Uh, what you really want to focus on, and it really helps you remember how to set these up, is what we like to call SOHCAHTOA. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A. And this is just a nice little helpful way of remembering which uh, or how to set up our sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's look. If we take SOHCAHTOA and we break it up and it looks like this, we're going to be making kind of like little formulas. So the S-O-H means that the sine of whichever angle we're looking for equals the opposite over hypotenuse. So let's look, if I have the sine of angle A, this tells you your reference angle. So look at that angle, then look at your diagram. If I'm going from angle A, then this is going to be my opposite side. My hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, and my adjacent is going to be down here. So if I want the sine of angle A, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which would be A over C. All right, well now, let's look at the next one, cosine of angle A. So, so katoa, C-A-H, means the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent side for angle A is going to be B, and our hypotenuse is C. So we've got B over C for the cosine of A. And lastly, the tangent of angle A, T-O-A in our so katoa, means tangent is opposite over adjacent. So our opposite is A, our adjacent is B. All right, so let's use those 
and do a couple problems. So here I'm finding the sine of a, cosine of a, and the tangent of a. So the first thing you want to do is mark your diagrams with the opposite adjacent and the hypotenuse. So from angle A, we've got my opposite side, my hypotenuse, and my adjacent. It's very important that you do this so that it's easy not to make little mistakes. All right, so sine of A, again, remember, so Katoa. So sine is S-O-H. So we want O over H. So opposite is going to be 5. And hypotenuse is 13. So for these problems, that's how we're going to set these up. But I'm not going to put the O and the H because I want it to really look like the equation that I'm setting up. Here, all they want us to do is find our simplified fractions, but we're going to be using these soon to actually solve for sides and angles. All right, cosine of A, cosine is CAH, so adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 12, hypotenuse is 13. So cosine of A is 12 over 13. And lastly, tangent, TOA is T-O-A. So tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we get 5 over 12. Now our next example, we have sine of angle B, cosine of B, and tangent of B. So again, always look for that reference angle, mark it on your diagram, and figure out your sides. Here's my opposite, my hypotenuse, and my adjacent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we get 3 over 5. Cosine of angle B is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we get 4 over 5. All right, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is 3 over 4. So for these problems, read your instructions carefully. All they wanted us to do was to write our fractions, our answers to simplified fractions. Now, let's go into why we really need these sines and cosines and tangents. So, finding sides. So, if we look at example A, I want to find side X. I can't use Pythagorean theorem because we have to have two sides in order to find the third side. So, that doesn't apply here. And I can't use my special right triangles because this is not 30, 60, or 45 degrees. That's where SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, and tangent come in. So I'm going to look from my reference angle and figure out my three sides, just like we did in the last couple problems. We have opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. Now if you notice, we're given the hypotenuse, we need to find the adjacent, which means I'm not going to use my, my opposite side. It's not going to be part of my problem. So if we think about SOHCAHTOA here, the only one that uses just the adjacent and the hypotenuse is cosine. Cosine of 38 degrees equals cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can use this to set up an equation and solve for x. So cosine of 38 degrees, we want our angle to go there next to our cosine, equals adjacent is x and hypotenuse is 4. Now to solve for x, we want to get rid of that 4 by multiplying it to the other side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So x is going to be 4 times the cosine of 38 degrees. Now, if we read our problem carefully, it says once we get to this point, we want to solve the ratio using our calculator. So here we're going to need our scientific calculators to help us solve this problem. So here your calculator might work a little differently than mine, so you want to get familiar with your calculator. But on mine, I'm going to type in my angle first, 38, then hit my cosine button. That's going to give me the cosine of 38. Then I multiply it by 4. And there's my answer. It says to the nearest hundredth, so I want to round to two decimal places. That gives me 3.15. So x is 3.15. And if we look at the problem, my hypotenuse was 4, so 3.15 is a little less than that, which makes sense. All right, let's look at b. So here we have our angle. Here is my opposite side, hypotenuse, and adjacent. So if we notice, I have the opposite, 
I need the adjacent, which means I'm not going to use my hypotenuse. Then we look up at Sokotoa, and we figure out does sine, cosine, or tangent use the two pieces that we have. The opposite and the adjacent goes with the tangent. So here I set up my equation, tangent of our angle, tangent of 67 degrees, equals, um, let's see, opposite, so 25 over x. Now x is in the denominator. This is a little more difficult. So in this case, what you want to do is think about cross multiplying. So put this over 1, cross multiply. x times the tangent of 67 degrees equals 25 times 1. Then we can divide by the tangent of 67. Now be careful, the tangent, it's not tangent times 67, it's tangent of 67. You can't separate the two of them, they're stuck together. All right, so x is going to be 25 divided by the tangent of 67. So here we go, a little bit of calculator magic, 25 divided by, and then I have to use parentheses, 67 tangent, and if you notice in my calculator, you can see above what it's doing. 25 divided by tangent 67. I'm going to hit enter, and I get 10.61. And let me just double check that my calculator did what it was supposed to. We have 10.61. All right, perfect. So x equals 10.61. Some calculators work differently, of course, so you'll have to really practice with your calculator and make sure that, um, that you're, you're getting the right answers. All right, now um, we've seen sine, cosine, and tangent used to solve for side lengths of our triangle. It can also be used to solve for angles. Now this is really important. We didn't really cover this in a fancy box, but I'm going to talk about it now. It's very important. So we have to use the inverse trig function. So sine inverse or cosine inverse or tangent inverse to find x. So if we look at this, we're gonna do kind of the same setup. So here's my opposite side, here's my hypotenuse. And if we look to Sokotoa, the one that uses opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Sine of our angle. Now, our angle in this case is x equals opposite over hypotenuse, 3 over 4. Now, to solve for x, remember, this is not sine times x. We can't divide by sine. They're stuck together. So in order to undo it, we have to use the sine inverse the inverse, so this is a sine inverse functions, and we have to do it on both sides. So what that looks like is sine inverse of the sine of x equals the sine inverse of 3 fourths. So we do the inverse trig function, and that, in a sense, cancels out and leaves us with our x when we're solving for the angle. So x is going to be sine inverse of 3 fourths, and then we use our calculator. So I figure out, well, 3 fourths, so 3 divided by 4 is 0.75, and then I do the sine inverse, um, and in this case, oh, there we go, I've got an inverse button, so I'm going to do sine inverse, and there we go, my angle is 48.59. And now let's read our directions round to the nearest whole degree. So 48.59 degrees, so x is going to be approximately 49 degrees in my problem. And make sure it makes sense when you think about a triangle, your angles aren't too small or too big. All right, and that concludes our lesson on right triangle trigonometry. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.